Hey guys, how is it going? Welcome scoundrels, well, welcome back to the channel. Gonna do a slightly different video today. Gonna be about, well, hopefully keep it as short as possible. I'm gonna try and keep it to 10 minutes. And we're gonna talk specifically about the top meta compositions. How to build them, what kind of swaps that you can make in and out for units, where the itemization goes and what the three stars are. I'm going to do this a little bit different to my normal gameplay videos because I realized I hadn't done this in a while. And I know a lot of you do find this useful, just having somewhere to come back to. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do all of the builds. I'm going to put the links to them in the description below. This is using a website called onegamerdash.com and you can go and find the auto chess builder on there. I use it all the time. Really, really good website. The guy uh, who runs it is a fantastic person. Uh, and I'm going to put all the links in the description below and you can either screenshot them or just run back to that link when you want to have a build guide because I know that sometimes in my videos I don't actually always put the builds in in fact I have been forgetting to do it the last few videos it just just kind of happens um so I'm going to do this video and this is going to be all the builds that I'm currently playing that I think are really good and we can talk about them uh so yeah I'm going to do all of those things and then we're going to try and make sure that we have all of them in the description below thank you very much for being here if you are here for a subscriber i, I want to try uh, someone I, I and this is not me i don't take I, i've started to learn to not to take negative criticism to heart like, like a lot of you guys in the comments really cheered me up you said come on it's scoundrel look it's just youtube it's just the internet you know how it is and, I, and I've, I've been a youtuber for years i know how it is but sometimes when you've got lack of sleep looking after a one-year-old who reaper's nearly won by the way guys which is insane i know he hasn't been on the channel for a while i should really bring him back on but the problem the problem is that he just starts hitting the keyboard and he's really hard to like keep to keep uh to keep entertained when i'm doing auto chess um but yeah look I, you know i i, I want to be more engaged with you guys and i don't want i i want to feel genuine um someone said that they didn't really think i was genuine recently so i I don't know if, I'm, if I don't feel genuine or you think that I can do something different, please just let me know. Uh, I want to make sure that I'm engaging with you guys as much as possible. I really, 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 really appreciate everybody that watches the videos. You honestly have all been amazing over the last six months. And yeah, okay, I get one or two negative comments and it sometimes gets me down. But I do see all the positive comments. I do really appreciate them. Um... And everybody that does put something nice on my channels, just know that you really make my day. And you really cheer me up when I get something negative. You're all amazing, honestly. Thank you. Honestly, really, really thank you. Um, so let's start off. Really, really important one. Uh, hunters. So let's go really quickly. The core of any hunter build right now is Dwarf Sniper, Agersus Ranger, and Umbra. Then you almost certainly are going to add your Agersus. So you're definitely going to be adding uh, Soul Reaper and Evil Knight. So this package of five is generally the core to most hunter builds. So screenshot this because this is your core package that you're going to want to have in all of your hunter builds. Then we can either go to six hunters, which I would not recommend because it's a little bit harder to make work. So people like to put in uh, Siren, Tsunami Stalker and Wind Ranger. That gives you six hunters and that gives you eight. And then you look for a front line. That front line is often going to be a random Magali Knight and then you often add in a tech unit. Uh, usually the tech unit will end up being something like a Dark Spirit to give you the Warlock bonus, and you end up with four Agursis, two Marine, uh, two Warlock, six Hunters, and two Knights. The other way that you can build this is scrap the Argali Knight and bring in something like a Pirate Captain to give you a bit of CC, or if you're really lucky at the start of the game, you can have a God of War. So what I'm going to do is for this particular build, I'm going to cut these two, and we're going to copy the link as the base of the six hunter build. So we're going to copy that link right there. Now, the reason I'm going to copy this and not just copy the base is because the base actually has quite a few different viable builds. So let's have a look at the base. This is the base hunter Igersis build. Now, you've probably seen a lot of stuff on the channel um, where we've gone something like this. Hell Knight, Agali Knight, uh, Dragon Knight. And then we go all the way to Dragons. And we can add something like a Frostblaze Dragon to give ourselves the three Dragon bonus and also the Warlock bonus. Or we can add a Venom and find another Warlock in the form of a Dark Spirit. I personally like this version of Knight Dragon Hunter Igersis the best, so I'm going to copy this one. So this is another really strong build that you can play off the back of this. So we're going to copy that into the Notepad document as well. And again, this is at level 9, so you have space for a Utility Unit. The other way we can play this, and we're going to keep going into this right now, is we can kill the Dragon Knight and the um, Hell Knight, or we can keep the Hell Knight uh, and take off the Agali Knight. And then what we add is we go to class, we go to Warlocks, we can add a um, 
Dark Spirit and also a Venomancer. And this is the the Hunter for Agursis for Warlock to Knight build. And then you can add a utility unit at the end, be a Storm Shaman, you can add a Pirate Captain, you could add whatever you like. There we go. That's the that's the uh, another version that I'm going to put into the notepad document for you guys in the description below. This is another really, really useful one. What I'm going to do after this is I'm going to take one of these builds and just randomly show you what the positioning looks like. So this is for all Hunter builds. There's a generic positioning guide. Um, I think there's one more. I think, no, I think this is all of the composition. I might put one extra Hunter composition in there just for you guys to have a look at. So this is another Hunter composition that we're going to copy into the document. And finally, let's have a look at, let's get rid of all of these guys. Let's have a look at a more classic Hunter front line. We can have Doom Arbiter, we can have Pirate Captain, and then we could have another uh, warrior like, let's say, uh, Werewolf. And then Werewolf allows you the opportunity at now after this, you can go into whatever you want. Um, again, I would probably recommend that you get some kind of Warlock in there. So probably just the best Warlock to have is Dark Spirit. And then that gives you a really strong... Uh, a really strong like warrior hunter base um so we're going to copy that link as well we're going to add that also in the description so there's all of the hunter agursis variations right now that are all really strong so let's quickly jump back to my favorite version of this which is going to be the the knight version so we're going to put in dragon knight agali knight hell knight and then also jump and put in a frostblaze dragon this is my favorite version of the build so let's talk about how we position it Dwarf Sniper always goes in the back corner. He's the longest range and your most important unit, so you want to protect him. I then usually put a Gersis Ranger right above him because then she's also very valuable, and I often end up putting my Soul Reaper in the middle. Frostblaze Dragon, I usually put over here, depending on... He basically varies depending on where the enemy is, but he usually is like here, here, or here. But let's put him here for the moment. Umbra, I like to have at the front because she's, it's, she's basically a tank. I like to have my Evil Knight and my Agali Knight there. I have my Hell Knight slightly protected, and at the back I have my Dragon Knight, because he's going to immediately transform, and you can switch these guys around depending on who is stronger, so you can put Dragon Knight there, or you can put, um, uh, I guess it's Ranger there, but I put Dragon Knight there because he's going to get the Knight bonus, and he's quite tanky. This is your basic positioning for any Hunter build, and your core is always going to have your Dwarf Sniper in the corner, and your front line up at the front here. This is the core way to position this build. Itemization, almost always your offensive items are going to go onto Dwarf Sniper. You can split your offensive items between Dwarf Sniper and Agursus Ranger, but Dwarf Sniper will always do the best with, with any damage items, any attack speed items, and even can do some well with things like uh, a bit of magic resist. Claw Wand is a great item for him. Your defensive items are almost always going to go onto your Hell Knight in this composition, but they can also go onto your Evil Knight or a Gale Knight, depending on who is strongest. Usually, I give them to whoever I three star. If I if I somehow end up three starring my Gale Knight or my uh, Evil Knight before my Hell Knight, I will give uh, them to the uh, the defensive items to those guys. That includes things like halberd, any armor, any extra defensive items that you have. If you if you have a magic crystal in this composition give it to your soul reaper it's always going to allow him to just cast more frequently it's a great item for him that is how itemization on hunters works let's move on to another composition so let's jump into my next build which i'm going to immediately copy into the description link for you this is called wall mages um it is an incredibly strong six mage build and probably one of the strongest builds in the game right now um very tied with hunters it really depends on, on itemization i'm going to show you one of the things that you can do, some of the, the swaps that you can make with this particular build um two of the major swaps that you can make is either winter chiropteran out and flaming wizard in uh i personally quite like winter chiropteran though so i usually try and keep him or you can take that and put an ogre mage in if you're lacking if you're needing more tanks this build doesn't really need tanks it's all about the burst damage and your frost blaze dragon generally does a lot of the slowing down with its wall but if you have an ogre mage three I do put him in over something like a Winter Carrot Terran 2, but the, the ideal variation of this build would be something like this uh, with Winter Carrot Terran in there as well. I might take Shining Dragon out and put Flaming Wizard in. Um, I just like Winter Carrot Terran because it buys you a bit of time. It freezes a unit, usually one of the frontline units taking a lot of damage, and that actually just gives you a bit more time. You could also take out Winter Carrot Terran and put in Shining Dragon. Um, if you want the pure damage version of this build, this is the one that I'm going to link. But again, you can make a lot of changes here. Um, 
generally when it comes to mages you can do a lot of things this was the wall mage composition so i'm just going to quickly copy that as just the pure damage version of the wall mage just going to add that to my list uh now we're going to basically take everything out and talk about just mages in general so just mages in general is very much like a, a six mage thing you take flaming wizards out you put ogre mage in this is just the the the, the, the baseline six mages what you can do with this is change up anything that you like. I often end up replacing uh, Flaming Wizard, for instance, when I eventually get God of War, I take out Flaming Wizard and put in God of Thunder. If I'm not playing the Dragon version, I'll keep Flaming Wizard in and take out Shining Dragon, and this gives you the non-Dragon version of the six mage composition. So there's lots of things that you can do with mages. Often it's best, and ultimately the best frontliner that you're going to, frontliner that you're going to get with mages is going to be Pirate Captain, because his stun does magical damage, and that's obviously very important. You can then also add in things like a helicopter. So a helicopter does, where is it? A helicopter does AOE magic damage, and then and then people obviously love to have Devastator in right now as well, because Devastator is the mixed damage that you get from um, from from physical damage. But the Wall Mages build that I've linked in the description below is just the best go to. Your uh, let's have a look at positioning. Uh, okay, so Tortola Elder always wants to be in the back corner, and then I like to surround him with the Source. I then add my Thunder Spirit in the middle. He's quite tanky. And then put my flowing wizard over to the side here. Ogre mage jumps at the top. What I sometimes do is, if I when I get God of Thunder, I replace um, God of Thunder in an enclosed position because he's very very important. I like to put helicopter all the way over in this corner because he has a long attack range and I don't want him to be clumped up. He also means that if they have things like storm shaman or other AOE, they might actually end up targeting my helicopter. And then I put my pirate captain here, and we usually put devastator somewhere in the middle over here. You can also then just extend devastator out like this and have him on your front line um, or you can just do this and put your flaming wizard on the outside or anything like that but realistically something like this is just a good way to play your six mage composition if you're going up against other mages you're going to want to split up in terms of items mostly your mana items are going to want to go on tortola elder he generates his mana very slowly so magic crystals are absolutely essential for tortola elder any attack damage items are either going to want to go on your Flaming Wizard or your Thunder Spirit. Thunder Spirit has got a natural high attack speed. Uh, Flaming Wizard gets a massive attack speed boost when she casts her ability. Later on in the game, if you have excess magic crystals, you want to give them to your God of Thunder. Um, and then any defensive items are going to want to go on your Pirate Captain mostly, but you can also give it to a three-star Ogre Mage. Don't give defensive items to a two-star Ogre Mage, it's a waste, but giving your defensive items to a two-star Pirate Captain is not. Attack damage items can also go on your uh, Helicopter if you have one, and often you don't need to give much to your Devastator, he kind of just chills in the middle of the board, and most of the time is perfectly fine. But sometimes people like to give him some armor or some magic resist just to make sure he casts his ability. Uh, refresh orbs are very very good on Tortola Elder, very, very good on God of Thunder, and actually pretty good on Devastator as well. So that's mages, six mages, and I've just linked the Wool Mage build because it is just the best, but there is plenty of things that you can do with six mages as a base. Would not recommend going for three mages because they're kind of garbage. Right, let's talk about goblins, and this will be uh, pretty easy because the best version of goblins right now is just obviously the classic six goblins, and then you can go and add whatever you like from here. Now, the classic editions are going to be something like warlocks, where you add in a dark spirit, um, and then some people like to go on further and add a frostblaze dragon and a soul reaper to give you uh, six goblins for warlocks. I'm going to copy that because it's a pretty solid build. Um, so we're going to add that to our to our list we're gonna have a big list of builds in the description here guys so goblins are very flexible and what you can do with them is is, is actually a lot um i could get rid of these two and then i could add something like uh Igersis. so let's have a look at Igersis here we could add the rest of the Igersis, which would give me Igersis ranger umbra and evil knight and what this would allow me to do is is make devastator the main form of damage coming from my composition another another way we could approach this is by uh, killing off one of the less important the least important um uh, units from each side so let's just say that we get rid of igersis ranger and we also get rid of heaven bomber and then we can go and add our wizards if we find our wizards where are they 
do 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 I don't know what their symbol looks like here we go you can add your wizards like this and that is going to basically achieve the same thing for you it's going to give you six goblins and four agursis but you also are then going to have the added benefit of things like the grim touch ultimate uh, and also a bit of extra demon damage grim touch ultimate is really nice for things like soul breaker uh, but you can just play it either way um, I'm going to go back to the original version. Uh, well, actually, I think this version is probably better. I actually think getting rid of those units in this version is actually superior because these two units are better than things like a Gersis Ranger and uh, Heaven Mama. So we can get that and add it into our uh, uh, Goblin, Wizard, and uh, a Gersis build. Another build that you can play off the back of Goblins is if we get rid of all of these and go to goblins and add them back is you can literally just go add them back you can go goblins and then you can add siren and tsunami stalker for a uh, marine bonus and then you can also add these two if you want to get extra marine bonuses but a lot of people usually end up sticking with the base here and then going to warlock and adding in a dark spirit and then maybe they end up adding in something like a storm shaman to give you a good anti-mage goblin build so i'm going to add this in the descript description as an anti-mage goblin build Um, another build that you might have seen floating around is if we get rid of all of these is a um, is a mage build so a goblin mage build uh, where you go something like Tortola Elder you then add uh, Thunder Spirit and then you add God of Thunder if you can get it God of Thunder can be replaced by pretty much anybody but I'm going to put God of Thunder because it's the best variation of the build and then at level 10 you add in Dark Spirit to give you the spirit bonus as well um, this is a goblin mage build. It's three mages, but because you have the goblin bonus, you last a little bit longer, and actually it's a pretty solid build all round. So we're going to add that one um, to the list as well. We've got a lot of builds going on right now. Um, I'm going to just show you classic goblins and how to position them. Honestly, and I'm going to be completely honest with you guys, with you guys here, you classic goblins don't require much positioning <laughs> it, it's going to sound stupid but classic goblins don't actually require much positioning um you want your ripper in the middle somewhere you want all of the ones that have got kind of aoe in the middle somewhere so you want your ripper maybe with your devastator like that i like to put the devastator in the middle unless you know exactly where people are coming from um and then you like to have your dark spirit over here and then your and then your um frost blaze dragon's going to go wherever you want it to go um realistically but you want your you want your devastator in the middle somewhere because your devastator is going to allow you to um at least deal, at least deal damage to whichever side people are on once you know which people side people are on you're going to put your devastator on either side but goblins don't require much fancy positioning oh and itemization wise bit of a difficult one i like to keep my magic crystals for my dark spirit in goblins because there isn't much else that i would actually give magic crystals to you can give them to heaven bomber early on uh but then you have to sell your heaven bomber to give them to someone else more relevant so i like to i like to give them and save them to my mag to my um uh, to my dark spirit defensive items i like to give to a three star ripper if i can't get a three star ripper i give them to my venomancer um and then I give the Venomance and my attack damage items as well because he really benefits from that. That's generally what I do. I could also give defensive items to Skybreaker, but he is not as good as giving them to Ripper or to Venomancer. And if you can get Venomancer to three star with defensive items and offensive items, he becomes a monster. So he's like an individual carry in the Goblin build. Moving on. Don't worry, guys. I know it's taken a while for us to get here, but we're going to blitz through some some compositions now. Um, going to go on to assassins. These are uh, this is a build that I think is probably one of the best in the meta right now. Let's go through it. This this oh rest in peace, Phantom Queen. This this um, this, and I actually like Venom over Water Spirit right now. And then we go to Druids. Where is it? Druids. And then we're going to add Warped Sage and this guy. You do not need to do anything more with assassins, but you can add whatever you want in at level uh, 10. 10, you can add to a Gersis, which I would recommend if you're going to add to a Gersis. You add... Where is a Gersis race? Here we go. I would, I would recommend if you're adding a Gersis, I would add 
Soul Reaper, and now I'd add Evil Knight, if you're going to add a Gersis, because they're the best ones to add in this situation. You could also add two more beasts, and in this situation, I would probably recommend that you add something like uh, Werewolf, and then you can add Tusk Champion, um, or you can add Unicorn. It's pretty easy to three-star a Unicorn when you've already got the, the Razor Claw and the Warpwood Sage, and it gives you a bit of extra healing. You can add the beasts for extra damage. You can also add Marine, um, which is going to be Siren and Tsunami Stalker, which is obviously fantastic as well if you can get them and then you can also add if you really want something like warlock uh, and warlocks would be dark spirit and also soul reaper um, you could also add venomancer as well venomancer would give you a little bit of um, uh, armor reduction against some of the higher higher level targets so all of these are really good options at level 10 for assassins but mostly you focus on these guys this is the the, the, the composition and when you when you position them it's going to look something like this uh this 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 doesn't really matter where you put these guys to be honest with you um most of your offensive itemization should go on to either abyssal crawler or shadow crawler if they are both level two and you are nowhere near getting them to level three give it to shadow crawler if abyssal crawler is level three and shadow crawler is level two and not close to level three give them to abyssal crawler if shadow crawler is level three put everything on her um Mana generation items should go on at least one I like to give to Shining Assassin and I like to give one to Venom as well. Now, why have I chosen Venom over Water Spirit? Because Venom right now is very good versus Hunters. He almost always is going to target the Dwarf Sniper because he, tar he targets the unit with the highest attack speed. Um, so Venomancer is a really, uh, sorry, Venom is a really, really good anti-Hunter attack speed uh, item. Uh, defensive itemization. Uh, I like to give most of it to the assassin that I am putting my carry items on. So I like to have some armor or magic resist on on my uh, my shadow crawler. You can then give a little bit to your warpwood sage. Don't worry about razor claw. He's just there to summon the bear. That's all. That's all he's there to do. Just summon the bear and then he can die. Um, but defensive itemization should mostly go onto your carry assassin, be it one of these two, uh, and then something onto. Um, uh, Warpwood Sage. What you should rec what you should realize is if you're playing Abyssal Crawler uh, Carry Assassin, you should have at least one Magic Crystal or some kind of, of, of mana generation item on your Abyssal Crawler because it helps um, them get their, their ability back more quickly. So that's Assassins, and I'm going to copy this link. Really kind of racing through this now because I know this is going to be a slightly long video. All right, let's talk about the, the build that I played yesterday, which was Glacier Knight. Obviously, we're going to show you the base Glacier Knight build, which is this. And if we go over to Glacier, we're going to pick up a Defector. Do, do, and then we're going to pick up also my Soul Reaper. So this is the base Glacier Knight build. Um, right now... I think this is the best variation of it because at level nine, you can then go on and add a storm shaman to get the shaman bonus, which is going to be very powerful with defector or which is the, the, what I actually recommend doing is adding in dragon knight and a gali knight and getting six knights four glacier two agursus two warlock. I think it's the best build versus the meta right now. You do need to go to level 10 to activate it, but it's going to give you lots of survivability versus both mages, assassins and hunters it can do you really well. So this is, this is the build that I'm actually going to recommend when it comes to Glacier Knights. But, but if you're not level 10, remember that Dragon Knight and a Gali Knight can be got rid of. Um, there are a few, not many variations that you can do of this build, if I'm honest with you. Um, like I said, you can get rid of these two and then you can add in Shaman. You can get rid of these two, then you can add in two extra Warlocks to give you four Warlocks. The four Warlock builder would be something like, let's get rid of a Gali Knight and Dragon Knight and add in um, Dark Spirit and Venomancer. Uh, I like Venomancer because it reduces armor and is a little bit better than Frostblaze Dragon in this scenario. But I always, always, always prefer just playing the knight version because six knights gives you much, much more defensive capability for your knights. So this is the build that I'm going to recommend. I'm going to copy the link of that. Um, for, for positioning... Uh, it really depends, but in this current meta, I think the unless you're going against assassins, the positioning I think needs to look something like this. Um, let's put that there, that there, 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 there. So I think the positioning should look something like this. I like split positioning versus mages. Um, actually, to be honest with you, I would swap these guys over because I don't want to put my two most important units on the same side. I like split positioning when I'm playing this this mage uh, this uh, knight build because if you're going up against assassins, even if your light blade knight gets isolated, if she gets her shield and she's got her itemization, she should be fine. You could 
swap this over like this. No, I, I actually prefer to have... You could do it something like this and have her on the more crowded side. So it takes longer for the assassins to get to her. But basically, any kind of split positioning is really good. Itemization. Everything offensive needs to go onto your light blade knight. Attack speed, frantic masks, damage, all that kind of stuff. Anything defensive should go onto your hell knight. Your three-star priorities should be light blade knight and hell knight. And that's it. Just realized I haven't done the three-star priorities for the other builds. Uh, let me quickly run through that now. Hunters should be dwarf sniper at all costs um assassins shadow crawler and abyssal crawler um mages you don't really three star anything but if you're going to three star something it has to be a one cost usually and that's going to be something like um ogre mage or winter carrot terror but you don't really need to three star anything in mages just make sure you get your big carries to two star like the totala yeah in knights it's going to be hell knight and light blade knight and then you can work on evil knight and agali knight afterwards desperate doctor and frost knight as well if, if you get the units so that's what i would do there cool knights okay so two more builds to go through uh one of them is going to be beast warrior why beast warrior over nine warriors nine warriors is is because of how prevalent mages are right now nine warriors are not that good um but you can go to level 10 and add in a siren but i'm going to focus on beast warrior because i think it's just the best version of this build dunk 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 okay so we've got our six warriors there with our beasts and then we go to two different ways of, of building this now. Um, what I like to do is try and get a Poisonous Worm and a Razor Claw in there. And then at level 9, I like to add Siren or Tsunami Stalker, both of which are pretty good. But I actually quite like Siren because Siren gives you um, the physical damage increase, which is really good for Warriors. So I'm going to copy this version of the build. Um, but just because it's kind of a bit, it does a bit of everything. And if you can snowball it, it's really good. Uh, positioning wise, as long as, to be honest with you, as long as these guys are on the back line, it doesn't really matter. I like to put him over there. I usually put my Siren up on the side over there as well. And I usually put my Poisonous Worm behind my Razor Claw. I like to give a bit of space between my Razor Claw because I want him to summon his stuff. It's really easy. Honestly, Beast Warriors is not that hard. Itemization. Offensive itemization should go on your Berserker or on your Doom, depending on who you want to be your carry. Defensive itemization I like to give to Doom or Pirate Captain mana generation on your siren or your poisonous worm but i actually quite like to give it on to poisonous worm and if you get a refresh orb always nice to have it on your razor claw because of the beast bonus boom beast warriors done very quickly okay and finally because the we i kind of have to include these guys uh divinity mages they're not particularly good right now i will put that out there divinity mages are not particularly good right now however it is important to include them um let's just go the source is really important in divinity mages and then we can go to storm shaman uh i like to add a where is it i like to add a devastator if i can find one uh what else do we like to add to divinity mages this is like the core uh you've got your mage here you've got your divinity and then you add whatever you want after that basically anything that is good and has a good ability some people like to add wind ranger for instance um some people like to add um dark spirit get rid of the thunder spirit and add dark spirit and replace it for another mage uh, which is definitely definitely something you can do uh people like to add siren uh because obviously your siren is going to cast her ability quickly i think that's a pretty good pretty good spread of, of stuff that's that is good with uh, divinity mages so i'm just going to copy that link you don't need to include wind ranger to be honest with you and divinity mages is pretty easy to position um, you want to be flexible with your Grand Herald positioning because uh, he essentially is the guy. He is essentially the guy that is going to um, copy an ability. But this is this is how I position them. All your uh, mana generation and orb of refresh should go onto your Storm Shaman. Really, just one of the best units to have that kind of stuff on in, in Divinity Mages because he just if he gets refresh orb in Divinity Mages, especially before you get your three gods, absolutely broken. Defensive itemization should go on to God of War. Um mana generation, like I said, onto him. Skill damage should go onto your um Storm Shaman, but you can also give some to your God of War. And it's nice to have a little devastator in there as well. So that's how I would build uh something like this. Oh yeah, I forgot. Actually completely forgot. Let's say we let's say we don't run Siren. And I actually don't like to run Siren. Um let's go to warlock so there we go desperate doctor and soul reaper this is yeah this is probably one of the more common ways of building this bit this um this composition 
Um, and I'm actually going to use this one to copy. You get your Warlock bonus as well. This is the one that I'm actually going to put in the, in the link description below. Um, you don't need to give anything to these guys, but they give you the Warlock bonus, which is really nice. So there we go. Right, I think that's it. That's, that's every composition that I want to include. I'm not including Feathered. One second, I'm just getting a call. Hey guys, sorry, uh, I got a phone call there. Uh, but there, to round out, those are the builds that I want to suggest for the meta right now. I've linked them all in the description with all of the links to the Gamer Dash website. Um, enjoy. Uh, this is a slightly different, slightly different type of uh, type of video, and I hope it's it's useful for you. I'll also put timestamps with the builds in the description below, as well as in the comments below as well. So enjoy. <laughs>